Prime Minister Agat Yueling Imena, President Habir Imena's dismissal of Agat Yueling Imena as Prime Minister in August 1993 marked the beginning of a tumultuous chapter in Rwanda's political history. Despite her official removal from office, Yueling Imena remained in a caretaker capacity for eight precarious months until her tragic demise in April 1994. Throughout this period, she faced relentless criticism and condemnation from Hutu-dominated parties, including her own MDR and President Haburimina's ruling party, in January 1994, a damning press conference orchestrated by this party's label Yuelin Yemena as a political trickster further undermining her authority and credibility. Despite the mounting pressure and hostility, Yueling Imena courageously persevered steadfast in her commitment to her duties as Kateka Prime Minister on November 3, 1993. Amidst rising tensions and violence, Yueling Imena publicly denounced retaliatory actions against Tutsis following the assassination of Hutu Burundian President Melchior Nede. She warned against the use of violence to disrupt the fragile Arusha transition, demonstrating her unwavering commitment to peace and stability in Rwanda. The swearing-in ceremony of the broad-based transitional government, the BBTG, on March 25, 1994, was intended to mark a pivotal moment in Rwanda's transition to democracy. Yueling Yemina was poised to step down in favor of Faustin Twagaramangu. With assurances of a lower level ministerial post in the new government. However, the absence of the RPF, Rwandan Patriotic Front, at the ceremony delayed the establishment of the new regime, casting a shadow of uncertainty over Rwanda's political landscape. Despite the setback, Yueling Yemina persisted in her efforts to facilitate the transition to the new government. She reached an agreement with the RPF to postpone the swearing-in ceremony to the following day, hopeful that this delay would pave the way for a smoother transition of power. However, little did she know that the events that would unfold in the coming days would plunge Rwanda into darkness and despair, culminating in her tragic and untimely death. As darkness descended on April 6, 1994, Rwanda plunged into a nightmarish abyss following the tragic demise of President Haburimena. With the talks between Haburimena, Iwilin Imena, and the Rwandan Patriotic Front left unresolved, the nation teetered on the brink of chaos and uncertainty. At around 8.30 p.m., the tranquility of the night was shattered as the president's plane was mercilessly shot down by surface-to-air missiles. In the blink of an eye, Rwanda's political landscape was irrevocably altered, leaving Prime Minister Yueli Nyemena as the de facto constitutional head of state and government. In the midst of the unfolding crisis, Yueli Nyemena found herself thrust into a maelstrom of terror and despair. In a desperate bid to restore order and seek justice for the fallen leader, she vowed to launch an immediate investigation into the president's assassination. Speaking in an interview with Radio France on that fateful night, her voice trembled with urgency as she described the harrowing scenes unfolding around her. There is shooting, people are being terrorized, she uttered, her words weighed down by the gravity of the situation. We are suffering the consequences of the death of the head of state, she continued, her tone tinged with sorrow and disbelief. We, the civilians, are in no way responsible for the death of our head of state, she emphatically declared, seeking to absolve the innocent of any wrongdoing amidst the chaos and confusion. But even as Yueling Yemena spoke, her home was besieged, her family trapped within its walls as violence raged outside. In those haunting moments, her last recorded words echoed through the darkness, a testament to the courage and resilience of a leader facing unimaginable adversity. And as the night wore on, Rwanda descended further into the depths of darkness, its future hanging precariously in the balance, in the tranquil enclave of Kigali's upscale quarter, nestled amidst the whispering trees and manicured lawns, a harrowing tale of horror unfolded on the fateful night of April 6, 1994. This compound, along with its neighboring residences, stood as silent witnesses to the unfolding tragedy that gripped Rwanda's capital in its icy grasp. As dusk descended upon the tranquil streets, the Iricom was shattered by the deafening roar of chaos and violence. The assassination of President Juvenal Habirimena, 
whose plane plummeted from the sky at approximately 8.30 in the evening, unleashed a torrent of bloodshed and terror that would engulf the nation in darkness amidst the chaos and confusion. The mantle of civilian authority was to pass to Prime Minister Agat Yuelinimena. A Hutu considered a moderate voice within the government as she stood as a beacon of hope in the face of impending doom. However, her political power was swiftly rejected by extremist elements, plunging her and her family into mortal danger. Throughout the night and into the early hours of April 7, the tranquil streets were transformed into a battleground as the military descended upon the neighborhood with brutal force. The heavily armed reconnaissance battalion and the presidential guard, their presence ominous and foreboding, unleashed a barrage of gunfire upon the gendarmes and Ghanaian peacekeepers who stood guard, preventing Yuelin Imena from seeking refuge or addressing the nation on Radio Rwanda. Colonel Theonest Begasora, in the heart of this chaos, stood Colonel Theonest Begasora, the puppet master orchestrating the macabre dance of death. With a stroke of his pen, he seized control of the military. Signing a communique that heralded the demise of the president and plunged Rwanda into the abyss of darkness and despair, in the quiet solitude of this once tranquil neighborhood, the echoes of gunfire and the anguished cries of the innocent reverberated through the night, leaving behind a trail of devastation and sorrow. And amidst the chaos, Prime Minister Yuweli Nimina and her family stood as symbols of resilience and defiance, their refusal to flee their home a testament to the indomitable human spirit in the face of unspeakable evil, escaped as the clock struck five in the morning, a chilling sense of dread hung heavy in the air. Ten Belgian peacekeepers sent to protect Prime Minister Yuweli Nimina arrived at her compound only to be met with a sudden, savage attack. The darkness seemed to swallow them whole as chaos erupted, and the innocent were cast into the merciless grip of terror. In the eerie silence that followed, the International Criminal Tribunal's cold recounting pierced the stillness like a knife. The Prime Minister, in a desperate bid for safety, fled her home, seeking refuge in a neighboring compound. Yet, even there, the tendrils of fear found her, ensnaring her in a web of horror and despair, the Begasora trial judgment painted a grim tableau of her final moments. As the sun reached its zenith, soldiers uncovered her hiding place, their jubilant cries echoing through the desolate landscape. She emerged, her gaze haunted and her heart heavy with the weight of impending doom. With trembling hands, she pleaded for mercy, her words falling on deaf ears as the shadows of death closed in around her. A small glimmer of hope flickered as some soldiers, touched by a fleeting sense of humanity, offered to escort her to safety. But their noble intentions were swiftly dashed by the arrival of Captain Jean Morgan Hategekimona, a harbinger of darkness and despair. With a chilling command, he sealed her fate, consigning her to a fate worse than death itself. In the blink of an eye, the tranquil facade of the compound was shattered, replaced by a scene of unspeakable horror. A lieutenant of the national police, driven by madness or malice, raised his weapon and fired, extinguishing the light of her life in a single, brutal act. Witnesses recoiled in horror as her shattered form lay upon the blood-stained terrace, her once beautiful face now a twisted mask of agony and despair, but the nightmare was far from over. As the darkness tightened its grip, Ewelling Imina's husband and five other men met their grisly end, their screams lost in the howling winds of terror. And yet, amidst the chaos and carnage, a faint glimmer of hope remained. The children, innocent and untouched by the horrors of the night, slipped through the cracks of fate, their lives spared from the clutches of death's icy embrace. The Brutality of the Soldiers In a gruesome act of brutality, Prime Minister Yuelin Yimena and her husband met a horrific end on the morning of April 7, 1994. Executed by the presidential guard, Yuelin Imina was shot point-blank in the head, her body later found naked with a beer bottle grotesquely inserted into her vagina. Their children managed to escape a seeking refuge in Switzerland. Shockingly, the UN troops tasked with protecting Yuelin Imina suffered a similarly barbaric fate, as recounted in Scott Peterson's book, Me Against My Brother, they were castrated, gagged with their own genitalia, 
and ruthlessly murdered.